wait a couple of seconds here. This is exactly what happened last time on Facebook. There was no, no one on. Can any? Or is anyone looking to see if I'm on? It just says you're on. It does say I'm on. Okay. Can you? Okay, there yeah, we go. Yeah, I just, oh, good. I'm glad it's it's working. So we had some difficulties on Wednesday with our Facebook, and it looks like it's working now. So great. What's that? Oh, was it? Oh, I didn't hear about that. Oh, I don't know. I didn't hear about that. Okay. Well, did you get my video? No. Then you had problems. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't when I wasn't on Facebook. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we're up and ready to go. Good morning, Diana, Patty. Glad you guys have joined us. Diana should be here, though. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, good morning. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Inland Devo 30. I'm Pastor Ruben. Thank you for joining us today. As I said, we had some difficulties on Wednesday, but apparently that was nationwide with Facebook. The corporation had a glitch in their system, and boy, does it affect people when a huge corporation like that has a glitch. So imagine if our government had a glitch, what would happen to our world? <laughs> It'd be chaotic, but be that as it may. Speaking of chaotic, this coming Sunday, we are beginning a new series on the end times. We'll be looking at the church age, the tribulation age, the millennium age, and there's one age that not too many talk about, but it is the new heaven age. So if you'd like to join us here at the church at 5383 Martin Street in Harupa Valley, love to have you here. We begin services at 9 30 9 30 so today we'll be in the book of <clears throat> corinthians so if you turn your bibles to chapter four to join us we will begin first corinthians? first corinthians yes let's pray gracious father we thank you lord for your precious word lord for it is your word that reveals truth to us absolute truth father from Genesis to Revelation, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that it is the Spirit of God that opens up our eyes and understanding to this truth, Father, for all your children, Lord. And we ask that you minister to us now through the Holy Scriptures, Father, that we may grow in our faith and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, let's open up our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 as Paul continues to deal with the Corinthian church, um, the carnal church, by the way. Now, again, keep in context that Paul is dealing with these, these men who are dividing the body of Christ, and he's deciding to choose not to take sides, but to bring revelation and clarity to what they're doing, that what they are doing is carnal, it's fleshly, it's prideful, it's arrogant, uh, because they're dividing the body and not unifying the body of Christ here. So he does not make any judgment on this at all. So we have to keep the context, uh, the context in what he's saying here in these first five verses. So let's go ahead and, and read them. Let a man so consider us, now he's talking about, himself along with Apollo and Cephas and any any leader in the church of that time he's saying let's consider us as servants of Christ so first thing and foremost Paul said we're servants we're nothing more than that we don't hold a title and we're not to be lifted up on a pedestal we're not to be the focus we are merely servants of Jesus Christ, and our gifts are to teach the Word of God, bring understanding to the church, bring correction if we need correction to be brought to each individual. It is their responsibility as a church to hear them because that's the role they play as teachers, as preachers to the body of Christ. But that is a service that they're offering to the people, and the people have free will to either accept or to deny. Just like we saw on Wednesday in Leviticus chapter 26, that God has blessings, but he also has cursings, and it's our choice in which we 
would receive. If we want to receive blessings, then we'll be obedient to God's word. If we want to receive curses in our lives, then we will be rebellious to God's word. We will fight against him. So it's true that if we want to hear God's word and accept God's word and grow, if we're teachable, then we'll receive the messages from those that are teaching the Bible. Of course, they have to be biblical teachers teaching scriptures alone. If we don't, then we will come up with our own ideas, our own philosophy, our own religions. And that's why it's, it's very important that we don't become an island by ourselves thinking that we're the grid of truth. We're not the grid of truth. We don't have the truth. It's God who has the truth and we have to submit to that truth. It's just basically that simple. Uh, we can probably go in detail to that, but we need to understand that. We're just, we're just servants of Christ, he says, and stewards of the mysteries of God. A steward is one who, who manages uh, a household at, the, at that time. And Paul is saying we are the stewards of God's precious word, and we have a responsibility to give out that word. Moreover, verse 2, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. So again, if, if you are listening to a pastor or under someone's leadership, as you should be in a church somewhere, then you need to make sure that they're faithful to the scriptures, that they're being accurate as much as possible, and, and that they bring clarity to just the scriptures there. But with me, and now Paul's talking personally, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any, by a human court. So Paul now is saying, look, you... You have no right to judge me on these issues that we're discussing. You can bring me to a human court, and they have no right to judge me on these things. And in fact, I do not even judge myself on these things. I make no judgment on these situations that you're arising because it's divisive. It's bringing divisiveness to the church, and that's something that I do not want to do. For I know nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before its time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. And then each one's praise will come from God. Paul says that there's going to be a point in time where the end of the world will come after the tribulation period and all of us will stand before God. And then he will begin to reveal the scriptures to us. Everything that has been hidden, everything that is in darkness, will be brought to light. Like being in a room that it's pitch dark. You know, we have uh, uh, lights here and they're dimmable. Uh, if we're in the middle of the night at 1 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock at night, and there were no lights outside, this room would be pitch dark. And you could take one of those switches and just turn it on and there would be a little light, a little bit of gleam coming through. It wouldn't be completely lit, but it would bring some light, some revelation to what's in this room. And as you bring that light up more and more and more, you would see all the details of what's going on. Now there's going to be a day when God will reveal our hearts and our works and the truth of his word. And then at that day... It will be uh, with him and with all believers. It was called the great white throne judgment of God where he will judge us completely on what we know. So Paul go, now goes on. Now these things, brethren, I have figuratively transferred to myself and Apollo for your sake, that you may learn in us not to think beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up on behalf of, of one against another. What happens in these situations is pride starts to come in and you get puffed up. We all know what that, that feels like because we oftentimes think we're right. You ever think you're right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we oftentimes think, I know I'm right. <laughs> I've studied this, I've experienced it. I know I'm right and that's pride when we know that we're right. Now, that's a line that is really hard to determine for each of us because as soon as you say I know I'm right I'm going to say no I know I'm right and now we've got a battle with each other on who's right and so Paul makes it very clear here that our judging has to be from the word of God 
from the word of God, you may learn in us not to think beyond what is written. What is he talking about there? Beyond what is written. Beyond what is written is right here in the scriptures. You can't think beyond that. You have to think exactly upon the scriptures and what they say to be the grid of truth. And so if the scripture says to jump, then guess what? We jump. <laughs> we don't get on a chair and jump. We just jump. We don't go beyond what the scriptures say. Otherwise, it is just supposition. It is hearsay. It is our opinion. It is our principle. And it's not biblical. That's a concept that's so hard for us to accept. But we need to accept it. We have to settle that in our minds that it is a scripture that is the grid of truth, all truth, and we must stick to it. Here, here's an example of that. There are people who believe, and probably even Christians, who believe that there are aliens, and I mean UFOs, unidentified objects, right? These creatures that come from another planet, and I can hear people already saying, maybe there are, though. You don't know. You just don't know. No, I do know. I do know. Because the scriptures are very clear that God created mankind in the beginning. He did not create other planets, other beings out there. If he did, then he would have to send his son, Jesus Christ, to die for their sins. So I don't believe in UFOs, unidentified flying objects in, in the world. Now, someone would say, but what if a UFO comes to this earth and, and identifies himself? You know, I'm a UFO, and we're co we've come here to serve man. You know, that's the Twilight Zone one. I don't know if you remember that. And the reality is that they're feeding us so that they can eat us. So these unidentified flying creatures in, in the skies are really our creators well that's unbiblical right there in itself right because we know our creator is god so here you have an example of people a group of people who believe in ufos but what does the bible say the bible is very clear that god created man in his image and that was it it was just mankind and he died for the sins of mankind not for another galaxy or universe some might say, but you don't know if there's another galaxy that he's dealing with over there with their own Bible. I'm like, okay, this is all supposition. This is all your philosophy. So we have to stick with what is written, as it says here in Corinthians. And what is written is that Jesus Christ is the creator of mankind. He died for our sins, and we have to surrender our lives to him. So that is what is written. Everything else is supposition. So we need to approach it that way. Well, what if they come down and they show themselves? And this is what I believe. If all of a sudden some being comes down and they come out of this flying saucer, you know, and, and we're here to serve man, then I would say you're demonic. You are demonic. You're from the pit of hell and you're deceiving mankind and trying to believe in something other than the written scriptures. That's what I would say. And I think that I would be correct because there is no other salvation but in the name of Jesus Christ alone. So, Paul makes that very clear, that we must uh, understand things in light of what is written in the scriptures, and then God will bring to light in the end times. Verse 7, for who makes you different from another? And what do you have that you did not receive? Now, if you did indeed receive it, why do you glory as if you had not received it. So again, dealing with this carnality of choosing sides between Apollo and Paul and who's a greater preacher, who's a greater expositor. Paul is saying, look, they're all gifts from God and God has given you that gift and you walk around as though you somehow have had this gift and you're the gift to mankind. And it's a gift that was given to you. God gave it to you. So you have a responsibility to just share that gift and nothing more than that. You are already full, verse 8. You are, you are already rich. You have reigned as kings without us. And indeed, I could wish you did reign, that we might reign with you. For I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last, as men condemned to death. For we have been made a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to men. So again, he's talking about humility here that the apostles are the epitome of 
humility. That he raised them up in the end, chose the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And yet there are men in the church who think that they're the grid of truth when the grid of truth is the scriptures. Uh, guys, what we need to really do is just walk humbly with, for the Lord. God has entrusted us with, with his word as pastors, as teachers, as ministers, as ministry leaders, to just be faithful with what he has given us and to leave the rest to the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll, he'll all sort it out, as it said in verse 5, at the end there when he'll bring the uh, light to the hidden things of darkness. He goes on in verse 11, Even to the present hour we both hunger and thirst, and we are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless. And we, and we labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we endure it, being defamed, we entreat. We have been made as the filth of the world, the, off, the offscoring of all things until now. That's the ministry right there, by the way. Uh, ministry is difficult and it's hard and you become the offscoring of the world. Uh, you do the best you can to entreat and to encourage and yet there's always someone to defame you. You do the best you can to, to um, share the gospel and someone's there to bring filth into your, your world. Uh, that's just the ministry. You see what Paul's doing here? He, he's trying to teach the Corinthians that these men's are, men are trying to lift themselves up when he's saying true ministers are really servants and stewards and they're really abased. They're really to be humble in their walk. Do not do... Verse 14, I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. So now he's beseeching them or pleading with them uh, from a parent's perspective. Look, I'm not trying to disdain you. I'm not trying to upset you. I'm not trying to embarrass you at all. I'm trying to bring to light. I'm trying to teach you as a father would teach his children. I have shared the gospel with many of you and salvation has came through me through Christ Jesus. And so I'm hoping that you'll receive my, my word uh, with love and, and with grace. Um, the receiving of someone's word is, is very difficult to do. Being rebuked or corrected is very difficult to handle. Immediately our pride pops up and we like, no, I know better than them. Who do they think they are to tell me what to do, you know? And that's, that's pride. And Proverbs talks a lot about pride and being rebuked and how we need to be rebuked to be corrected and to grow in our faith. We have to be teachable. And so Paul is here <clears throat> beseeching them, encouraging them, and reminding them that he was instrumental in the gospel. And so he goes on in verse 16, Therefore I urge you, imitate me. For this reason I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up as though I were not coming to you, but I will come to you shortly. If the Lord wills, I will know. Not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What do you want? Shall I come to you with a rod or in love and a spirit of gentleness? So again, Paul's plan is to revisit them uh, and to bring this correction in a spirit of gentleness. Now, Paul warns them, as he said in this chapter, and his warning is a warning that comes from his very heart of love. He desires to correct them so that they have a walk worthy of Jesus Christ and not one that's, that's in the flesh. <clears throat> Our application today would probably be this, that if, if people are correcting us or encouraging us, they're doing so because they want our walks to be better. They want our walks to be pure. We, we need to be separated unto God and we need to walk for his glory. And a person that is truly a Christian humbles themselves before the Lord and is able to submit to one another. Ephesians talks about that submission one to another, especially if it's coming from 
the word of God is written, then we have to receive it. Whoever it's coming from, it must be the spirit of God. <clears throat> I was sharing this morning with somebody about a message I gave years ago uh, from the pulpit. And this lady came up to me afterwards and she kind of corrected me. She rebuked me. She said, how dare you gossip from the pulpit and talk about me? And I thought, okay, um, I've seen you here a couple of times. I really don't know who you are, but uh, no, I don't, I don't do that from the pulpit. And she says, well, everything you said up there was directed to me. It was like you were talking about my life. And so somebody has been talking to you about me. And I said, well, I don't even know if anyone knows you here yet <clears throat> because you've only been here several weeks. So this is what I think is happening. I think that the Holy Spirit has been ministering to you today and is trying to warn you or correct you and bring you closer and in, into a deeper relationship with Jesus. And she looked at me and she says, no, I think you're talking about me. And I says, well, I apologize. I'm, I'm you know, saddened that you think that, but I'm not talking about you. I think it's the Holy Spirit. And she went away and I never saw her again. So we really do need to receive the word of God with open arms and not rebuke it immediately. Forget the messenger. Uh, people often ask me, when someone confronts me and tries to correct me, what do I do? I said, forget the messenger. Listen to what they're saying. And if what they're saying is true, then receive it and even apply it to your life if it's biblical and it's written. But if it's not, then say, thank you so much for caring about me. Thank you for warning me. Thank you for giving me this correction. I will Think about it, I will pray about it, and we'll see what the Lord says. And then you leave it there. So on one party, they need to leave it there when they correct you and say, I've done my part, I need to move on. And on the other party, they need to receive it, and if it is true, then they need to correct it. If it's not, then they need to say, well, at least they were you know, loving enough and caring enough to warn me if they saw something in me, I need to be careful then in whatever area they're correcting me. That's a good way to... <clears throat> to approach those things so that you continue on in that brotherly love so pride isn't puffed up and you cause a division within your relationship. It's good for the church. It's the way we should do things. Uh, Matthew chapter 18 talks about, about uh, correcting a brother in that order and it's you go to them first and you talk with them in love and in mercy. So it's a good thing. So there's the application. So... Let's go ahead and close up in prayer. Thank you for viewing our Devo 30. Those of you who are watching on Facebook, I'm glad that's corrected from Wednesday. Please share this Devo on your Facebook. You never know who might be ministered to by it. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for your precious written word, Lord. We thank you that you have preserved it for thousands of years, and we have it today, Lord, to use as a reference of our lives, Father. Uh, may you give us a hunger and a desire to read it, Father. And Lord, may we, as we go out through today, Lord, if we're corrected or we're challenged in our views, Lord, that we would take a look at our own hearts and see if these things are true or not, Lord. And if not, then disregard it in grace. But if they are, Lord, then receive it in grace, Lord. And help us to uh, change, Father, that we may continue to grow and walk with you, Father. I pray your blessings upon my brothers and sisters. I pray that you will lead them and guide them today and throughout the week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you on Sunday at 930 here at the church.